Hi, do you find yourself avoiding situations that cause you anxiety? Just to realize that the anxiety gets worse the next time around. If that's you, you are in what psychologists call cycle of anxiety. So today's topic is to shed some light on what the cycle of anxiety is, what stages you go through, and how to reverse the cycle to be calm, capable, and confident instead of freaking out. I have already posted two videos explaining anxiety, how it affects our bodies, what factors contribute to it, and tips, of course, on how to overcome it. And I put the links in the description, so watch it, okay? It's amazing. I know I'm being biased because I recorded it. I have no shame. I know, I know. But it's down to earth explanation and it's going to help you. And after watching today's video, you are going to know what stage of freak out you are in, how to check in on your thoughts, scan your body, reflect on it, and of course, reverse it. Yes, you are totally able to reverse anxiety cycle. It, isn't this just wonderful news? Because I'm excited about it. So what is that seriously sounding definition? The cycle of anxiety. It is a process where a person either, either feels lack of control or avoids their fears in order to escape intense emotions. And as a result, a result, those fears grow increasingly powerful. So avoidance becomes increasingly difficult to resist and the anxiety continues to grow worse. But there is a way out by breaking the cycle. Awesome, right? But before we get there, first, there are four stages of anxiety and I drew you a little picture. Mm -hmm, yeah, the vicious cycle of anxiety. And we will start from here. We'll make our way all the way around, okay? So, uh, how will I do that? Uh, maybe like this. Yeah, this is more important. It's more important for you to see this than my face. <laughs> all right, so four stages of anxiety. The first stage, as you see, is... Um, Stage one, right here on the top. Um, and you feel anxious, right? You are forced to deal with it. That is the stage of anxiety that includes an automatic fight or flight response that we discussed in the previous two videos. Remember from uh, my other video, the primitive caveman bodyguard is activated and wants to protect you by like flinstoning you out of perceived danger. Yabba dabba do and you are out, right? You run out, just like that little fellow here. Stage two, you, that would be, uh, let me see, it's right here. Stage two, you attempt to avoid the situation, right? Your body automatically responds with sensations and reactions to protect you from perceived danger. This is when you scan for danger. Your physical reaction intensify, uh, your attention narrows. And remember when I put a biologist hat on and um, I told you about the muscles and about the heart and about the blood flow and your eyesight and of course the lack of digestion and change way of thinking. <laughs> Wasn't I an Einstein right there, right? <laughs> Seriously, I tried. I did my best. Anyways, third stage, right here. You see the guy with the sunglasses chilling out and phew, great thing. Because in stage three, you are feeling a temporary sense of relief. So you run, you hide, you avoid, you protect. You pretend you are not there. Whoosh, gun with the wind and phew, huge sigh of relief. That was a close, man, right? You escaped lion or at least 
That is how it feels. And finally, you go to stage four, right there. That's a long term um, stage. When you thought you were done and the danger was over, you realize that the lion will never go away. It will always be back. So you return to a state of heightened and anxiety. And what happens at this stage? Do you know? Do you know? You feel mentally, emotionally, and physically drained. Who feels this way? Because I did when I was anxious wreck. Okay, did you like my painting? Uh, my, my picture, isn't it pretty? <laughs> so let me give you a few scenarios so you know what we are working with, okay? So as you recall, stage one, for example, the thought of standing in, in front of a group of people at work and delivering, delivering a presentation makes you break out in a cold sweat. Stage two, your inclination is to escape, right? So you call in sick to work and you say, I'm sick, I can't come to work. Stage three, you immediately feel relieved since you don't have to do the task that's causing you to feel so anxious, right? And finally, stage four, this, rel the, this relief that you feel is short-lived lived, when you learn that the presentation has been rescheduled for the following week, causing you to feel anxious all over again. And now you cannot call in sick again, right? Because you've already used that. So you see, you are more anxious now. Okay, um, second scenarios. You decide, that's stage one, you decide to take a chance and start dating again. And your stomach is doing the upside down flips and you sweat and you start to even have headaches. Stage two, because your inclination is to escape, you cancel your date, right? You come up with an excuse that you think makes sense. Stage three, of course, you immediately feel relief since you don't have to go on the date that's causing you to feel so anxious. Pew, right? I can get in my comfortable jammies and watch Netflix and eat a bo box of ice cream. Stage four, this relief, again, is short-lived. When you realize that you feel lonely and you really want to have someone in your life, so you need to find someone to date causing you to feel anxious all over again. Worse yet, now you have to start all over again. Third scenario, stage one, your bills are due and you don't have enough money to pay them. So imagine a mess that your body and your mind is. Imagine a mess you are in. You feel and look like shit sometimes, literally sick to your stomach. I know because I was there many times trembling and thinking you are about to have a heart attack. Stage two, your inclination, of course, is to escape, right? So what do you do? Well, anything you can get your mind off this dooming and glooming financial crisis by distracting yourself with what? With sex, drugs, alcohol, binge watching TV, uh, scrolling through social media, even gambling, some people gamble, gossiping, so you call up your girlfriends and you gossip about other people, daydreaming even, or doing busy work that gets you nowhere. Whatever it takes to get your mind off your problem. Stage three, of course, you immediately feel relieved. You're numb, right? You don't have to think for now. You don't have to feel for now. You just go through the motion. Unfortunately, there is stage four. This relief that you're feeling is short-lived when you realize that you still owe the money, causing you to feel anxious all over again. But now it is even worse because the distractions that you used to escape destroy you. And more negative emotions like guilt, shame, depression kicks in. Of course, you know, there are so many different scenarios that are possible, but I hope you got the gist, right? Good news, good news. Let's talk about how to manage your symptoms and later on how to break that cycle, baby. Oh yeah, it's possible, so possible. And you know me already and you know I am a big for pro journaling. Journal, 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 your way out to joy. So first, 
first step of helping yourself. Determine where you are, at what stage that I have just told you. What stage are you in? Are you just facing the anxiety and you're freaking out? Are you, is your body already responding? Are you already hiding, fearing, avoiding, running away? Or are you already at this short-lived relief stage? Or are you at the long-term relief where anxiety comes back even harder and stronger and adds additional stuff to you like guilt, shame, depression, and etc. So what stage are you in on that picture? So ask yourself, what's happening? Why am I freaking out right now? Write it down, write the answers to those questions. What's happening? Why am I freaking out? Is this an event? Is this a thought maybe passing by my head? by my mind, maybe it's a feeling that I'm feeling, or maybe memory about something, or maybe I see something or experience something and I just got triggered. So what is going on? That's your first question. Second, what was my initial reaction? My first reaction, right? What did I want it to do? And then what did I actually do in the moment that I felt heightened worry, heightened anxiety, heightened freak out. Second step, check your thoughts. What unhelpful thoughts am I having in this moment? Do I notice any pattern of overthinking, even obsessing over something? Maybe I have self-doubt or maybe I am catastrophizing, making everything bigger than it actually looks okay, or, or is in reality. Next, next, please scan your body. Going back to my biology explanation of what happens to your physical response or reaction that you may be experiencing during the anxiety. So what physical reactions or sensations am I noticing? Is there an increase in heart rate, maybe blood pressure, maybe I'm sweating, maybe I'm having stomach ache, headache, blurred vision, tunnel vision, or any other discomfort that you feel in your body. So observe yourself and then reflect. Take a moment to reflect on how you cope with your anxiety. It can help you to realize how you can manage it the next time it comes back. The questions to ask here are, did I avoid the situation? Did I mask my feelings with unhealthy coping strategy? I know I did thousands of times until I broke the cycle of an anxiety. How did I do that? Well, let me give you tips to break this cycle, okay? If you think that this will happen overnight, check a different video and look for someone who offers shams and sells you garbage. Because I tell you, changing the way you think, you feel and act, act takes time and commitment. A good psychologist will tell you that an estimated time is about six months or longer. If you think that it takes too long, that six months is too long, well, think about how long have you been a victim of your primitive brain freaking you out and rubbing you off your life's experiences and happiness. Six months is nothing compared to what you are going through, my darling. I bet you it was longer than six months. It's possible to successfully manage your anxiety whenever it pops up, when you give it time, commitment, and effort. And it all starts with self-awareness. So what do we do to break free from any patterns that you may be stuck in? I am here to tell you that it is simple, but not easy. You have watched so far, so I know that you are serious about solving your mental trap of cycle of anxiety. So I know that you will take time, you will take effort, and you are committed to helping yourself. So here it is how, you to, how to do it. You reverse it, reverse the four stages. So I drew you another picture. Ta-da!
Let me explain it to you, okay? We start at the anxiety. Um, and before I go into it, there was this study done by West Australia Center for Clinical Interventions, and they have proven that it's possible to absolutely break the cycle of anxiety by reversing it. So let me show it to you how it's done, okay? So back to my lovely picture. Step one, right here, it's confrontation. You confront the feared situation, something that freaks you out. You confront it without the help of your safety behaviors. These are your unhealthy coping mechanisms that, that I have just um, talked about. You know, um, distractions. I call it distraction. It's the TV, it's the drugs, it's the alcohol, it's the sex, it's the gambling, it's gossiping, it's everything in between, okay? So you try to confront the fear, the feared situation without using those unhealthy coping mechanisms. And from our scenarios, it would be, you know, the calling in sick to avoid presenting at work or canceling the date with any excuse or, you know, um, falling into unhealthy distractions like I have just mentioned. It's in the past. We are no longer doing it, okay? We're no longer doing it. Instead, we take action. You see the action? Action, just like in the movie that will make us face the difficulty for, uh, and, and you know, and deal with those difficulties. So you do your uh, uh, jujitsu and you do your talking and you do, you, you confront people, you confront the situation, you confront and take action of everything that you are scared of. That's your step one. Step two, you see, it's not such a happy face, right? So what happens next? We allow ourselves to experience a short-term or slight increase in anxiety. Yes, it is going to feel worse for just a short period of time, okay? And then something amazing is going to happen. You will notice a decrease in physical symptoms. Remember my biology lessons from part one on how to overcome anxiety about your heart racing, your blood pressure elevating, your muscle tensing, your blood flowing into only major muscle, your digestion is stopping, your pupils are dilating, and you're having basically monkey brain. And of course, all of other symptoms trickling from those symptoms too, right? Well, all of it, it's going away when you face the fears, you dig your heels in and you take action to solve it. It is not a lion that you fight, just a perceived lion. And you can handle it, my friend. You are equipped with a weapon more powerful than anything else combined in this world. This weapon is your mind and you are in charge of commanding it. Your brain has no control over you once you realize that simple truth. It is you who is in charge of your mind. It is you who is the boss. It is you who rules your life. No one else, nothing else. It's you, you are a co-creator of your reality. And who is your co-pilot? Do you know it? It's God. It is your higher self. It's the universe. It's the spiritual part of you. It's the life force that is present in every living being, all around us, in everything, the energy surrounding you. What your mind believes to be true must come to being. So take control over your mind. Be the captain of your ship. Take charge. Take control. Change your life for better and be an example for those around you. Show them the way. Only you can reach your people who aspire to be like you. Not I, not even Oprah or Dalai Lama. It's you. You are an example for others who look up to you. So show them the way. Be the change that you want to experience. Be the leader. 
Oops, I did it again, right? I got carried away, so I'm sorry. Back to step three of reverse, uh, reversing the vicious cycle of anxiety. And that would be this step. All right, so outside of taking action, yes, you will feel a lot of anxiety, but outside of this, there is this step right here. Um, there is extra set of skills to adopt healthy coping skills. Why? It's to help you reduce your anxiety to a manageable level. So what are they? It's physical exercise. It's walking in nature. You see, I just, uh, where is this? Walking in nature. <laughs> I combined it. <laughs> nature, I mean trees, water, sand, rocks, not your treadmill. Okay, not the treadmill. That's not walking in nature. It's a meditation. It's deep breathing. Remember from part two, when I talked about diaphragm breathing, yoga means union between mind, body, and spirit. It's mindfulness. It's, it's self-care. It's journaling. It's building a strong support system. It's affirmation. It's reminding yourself that the feelings are like weather they are temporary and also confronting your thoughts you see that person right there is confronting the thoughts by asking yourself very important questions like is it helpful am i leading with feelings or facts is it a fact yes or no am i scared yes or no what am i scared of what evidence do i have that what I'm thinking is true. Probably none of it is true in most cases. And finally, finally, we go to step four. That's our holy grail. You believe in yourself, in your own ability to face this shit head on and come triumphant on the other side. Your confidence just skyrockets. You know you are capable of solving your problems. You grow stronger with each time you face difficult situation. You, you, your mental muscle grows. Okay, muscle. You see, I even grew the muscle. <laughs> your abilities, your skills, your capabilities. You become a weapon against an anxiety until it shuts up and only serves you in real danger when you need it how it is supposed to happen you are in control of your reactions and your responses so what it's gonna be will you break that cycle i hope you will and as always if you think or notice that you are a person that needs extra help do not be ashamed to ask for help do not be afraid afraid or stingy to pay for a professional help to help you achieve wellness and joy. Hire a coach like myself who uses powerful tools and stays on the top of your progress or hire a therapist who uses art therapy, cognitive behavioral therapy and uh, virtual, virtual reality exposure therapy. You are not alone. Your case is not hopeless. You can take over your mind and co-create life of your choice with enough time, with enough help, with enough messages, with enough efforts, enough commitment from you. Don't wait. Take healthy actions today. Life is too short and too precious to live constantly in an anxiety and worry and distress and isolation and pain. Reach for joy. Reach for joyful new life. All right. Ella's out today. Bye, y'all. Ciao.